Hello there everyone, it's Darren here from Push Square and today it's the official launch of the all new PS Plus in the United States. This is one of the biggest launches we've had of the service so far. Of course it's previously available in areas like Asia and we had previewed it then, we showed you an overview. If you want to have a more in-depth look at the menus and some of the games, head over to that one but do know that that was only the PS Plus Deluxe Edition, I nearly said premium there. PS Plus Deluxe. So that is without cloud streaming. But now that we have the full US launch, we have the PS Plus Premium Edition, which does include cloud streaming. And what that means is that you're getting a whole load more games through the PS3 generation. We're getting a bit of a bump to the PS1, 2, and PSP games, and maybe some changes here or there. We're going to show you one of the games playing through streaming and just have a look at some of the catalogue. So this isn't a full breakdown. If you want that, go over to the overview video. But this is just going to show or highlight some of the differences and some of the additional features. So, of course, we're on the PS5 dashboard right now. We're going to head down to the game catalogue. This is just going to be your PS4, your PS5 titles. A lot of these games are the ones through the PS Plus Extra, which is the middle tier, the one up from Essential, which is your most basic. And as we can see, some pretty big hitters here, but we've went through this before. However, here, there isn't much of a difference. It seems like, for the most part, it's pretty much just the same games. We're still getting the duplicates from the PS4 and the PS5 versions. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything right now that's sticking out as like a brand new edition. However, if you want to have a full breakdown of every single game included with the service, head on over to the Push Square website where we'll have a full A to Z list of everything you need to know. I'm going to link that down below for you guys. So not much of a difference here. One of the big differences is though when we go over to the classic games list, your PSP, your PlayStation, your PlayStation 2. At the time, this was really disappointing. It only had around 15, if I'm remembering right, in the Asian version of the service. Now with the US one, we have quite a bump. We've got quite a few additional games here. However, it's still not a massive lineup. Of course, this service is quoted, was quoted with 340 classic games. And there was a bit of an implication that that was spread equally across PS1, PS2, PS3, PSP. Obviously, that isn't actually the case. Because as you can see here, these are a big chunk of your platforms with only around what is it, like 30 games so really quite disappointing there however i saw quite a few of you in the last video asking about platforms and what was accessible of course you can get ps plus any tier as a ps4 like as a ps4 user however you won't have access to ps5 games however that does solely relate to ps5 games so any of the classic games here you'll see have the PS4 tag above them. So that means even if you're on PS5, you're going to be playing these via backwards compatibility. You go further down this list and you'll start to get the PS4 and the PS5. So you'll be able to play natively in PS5, natively in PS4, whatever you choose. So PS4 players, you aren't getting cut off here. Moving on then to one of the big parts, we've got cloud streaming, which is the one obviously through the internet. Sony claims that you only need 5 megabits for a sub 1080p, so anything resolution wise less than 1080p, you need 5 megabits per second speed. And anything post, like higher than 1080p or on 1080p, you're going to need a minimum of 15. Real world circumstances, I would say you would need a little higher than that for it to run comfortably. However, it will vary from person to person, place to place. Let's jump into the PS3 lineup. Now this is the biggest influx of games in comparison between the models and I'm going to just kind of go through this quite slowly just so you can see some of the games. Split second, big fan of that one. And you can see some instantly recognisable titles and we're getting to some of the more obscure stuff the further down we go. But this is a lot of different games and all of these are purely accessible via cloud streaming. I'm not going to pretend that I know how the internal architecture of the PS3 works or doesn't work on the PS5. 
it just doesn't. So you can't download these games. You're going to be accessing these purely through cloud streaming. So let's just jump into one of these games. I had Red Dead Redemption playing earlier. Clicking that one there. I had a, there we have it. We're closing this one. So previously, it's taken around about 30 seconds to a minute for a game to start up. If this takes too long, I'll just cut to the chase, but you'll be starting up the game. Maybe the first time you boot it up, it will sync up and transfer some of the trophies because you can continue to play this game from your old saves if you have them up into cloud storage. If you don't, you're just going to have to, have to start it brand new. That's what I'm having to do because admittedly, back in the time of Red Dead Redemption, I was playing on Xbox 360, not PS3. So if you have those saves still available, you should be able to access them here and just go into your old saves. Continue as you did 10 or so years ago. We've got that classic intro and as you can see, that was roughly about the best part of a minute before we even got into the menu. But we're going to continue on past there and we're going to see how this plays and how it looks. There we have you, that was about 30 seconds to get into the first cutscene of the game. As you can see here, this is the game recording, it's not going to be the clearest, it's not, we're not talking 4K60 here. But let's just skip ahead into the actual game. Another 20 seconds or so later and we are in the game. Now, it's not the smoothest as you can see, the, the, the frames are a little jittery and Obviously, PS3 game, it's not going to look quite up to scratch, but in terms of the cloud streaming goes, it doesn't actually control too bad. We're getting some vibrations still through the DualShock 5, or the DualSense controller, sorry. And everything is run running relatively well, it's just obviously that, that frame rate that you're going to have to put up with, which is just par for the course when you're playing older generation games. So when you're playing these, you can back out. You can go straight into the dashboard, mess around for a minute or so, straight back in. However, if you come out of these and you leave for more than, say, a minute, you'll get a warning saying you've got 30 seconds left and then the game will shut down and you'll have to go through that whole process that I went through just to start this thing up again. Now, something very interesting, you might be noticing it right now, is that down below you have an offers end 1710 2022 3 p.m. Initial reactions, I would have thought that that is, or I do think that that seems to be a confirmation of when this game will leave the service. However, going on to other games that we had Batman Arkham Origins, didn't have that inclusion. And as we go back into some of the other, let's get, get them up for you here. Some of the other cloud, cloud streaming games, it's not coming up here. So, a bit of an odd one, I'm not quite sure why it was cropping up with that and not some of the other titles. But I would suspect if you, if you know anything about streaming services at all, we tend to get information on when we can expect things to leave. I'd hope that when a game has a set date, maybe like Red Dead Redemption, most of these might be on far longer contracts with Sony. Some of them might just not, like just be on indefinitely, maybe Red Dead Redemption because it's a bigger company, it's Rockstar. There's that warning there for you. It just says when it's going to release, I'm not quite sure, but that is there just, I thought it was worth mentioning. So of course, this is a full breakdown of everything you've got, all of your PS3 cloud streaming. Something I missed out on last time actually was the remasters uh, section, which I think is looking pretty nice to be honest. It's got some, obviously it's not a huge list, but Mafia in particular, not all too old that one. But of course, let us know down below what you're thinking of this. There's that game closed now. This is the full PS Plus premium launch in the US. Obviously it's not launched quite yet in the UK, but I would suspect that we would get something very largely similar to this. This is pretty much what you can expect for big day one PlayStation Plus. So let us know down below if now that you've seen the game, seen the kind of things that you can expect through this service, if you're going to be picking it up 
you're going to stick with your essential tier, which is just the basic PS Plus, or are you going to go somewhere in the middle and go for the extra tier? Let us know down below how it's all looking. And as always, thank you for watching the video. If you could leave a like, that would help us out massively. If you want to see more PlayStation content like this and other gameplay, reviews, talking points, all of that sort of stuff, why not subscribe to the channel? But anyway, guys, I'll see you next time on Push Square.